the energy is everywhere. It's it permeates everyone and everything. So it's in in us all. So these dantians and these chakras, what is the route in which the energy travels? If there was no light, you'd never knew darkness would exist. Mm, exactly. So there's a lot of things that we don't know because we haven't seen the opposite of it yet to help us understand what we've always had. And that really is true power. Because all of a sudden, when you carry this aura, and I say this to my students, when you carry an aura, right, uh, that is filled with this free flowing chi energy, you're not gonna get into a fight. Welcome everybody to another Martial Mind Power podcast. I'm Jatinda Palahar with Sifu Lakloi. And we're going to be diving into our fantastic Cohen book called The Art of Thinking Without Thinking. And as always, we're going to, you know, share some wisdom bond. And before that, Sifu Lakloi, how are you doing, my friend? Very, very well, brother. Very well. All is good in the hood, as I say. What about you? Yep, absolutely cool, man. I'm excited about what what topic comes up today. So, um, yeah, man, without any kind of waiting, let's just hope we don't pick another page which we've already done. So let's try that one. Oh, cool. So we have page uh, 452, Teo Yin. Okay, so do you know how to pronounce this one? Is it Teo Yin? <laughs> <laughs> Taoyin. Taoyin. Oh. Taoyin. See how the pronunciation of the word changes the whole feeling about it. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we read these things in English when they're like, you know, origins are from a different place and um, w- without being disrespectful or anything. But, we, you know, for, yeah, th- say that again. Tao. Ta- Taoyin. Taoyin. <clears throat> so it's, pron- it's spelled T A O. And yep. yin is as in uh, y i n, right? So you know you you, you 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 probably you know if you're a Bruce Lee fan, you know his first book was called the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, for instance. So mm-hmm. that would be like the Western pronunciation, but actually it's it's a more of a D in pronunciation than it is a T. So it's right. Tao. Tao. Okay. So, right. Something new for me to learn today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So, <clears throat> Dao Yin, what do you think? Wow. What? Okay. So, this is interesting. So, when I was trying to read it, I was just like, okay. But when you said it, it felt different. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just going to go by the feeling that I got from it was that it's something to do. With, so, the feeling I got was from when my dragon is on my shirt. It was from there. It came outwards. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, the feeling I got was like that, probably influenced by the picture as well. So I'm going to think it's something to do with inner strength, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so just for our audience, okay, um, I'll for the viewers, I'll show the picture of uh, this koan. And for the listeners, is a picture of a gentleman, okay, that is got, uh, he's standing there with a naked torso with his... Uh, palms facing each other, right, at the heart level. And his solar plexus and heart uh, center is glowing bright white, okay? So that's the image there. So what is this related to? So Dao Yin is, is you kind of you're on the right lines in the in the sense of you feel this thing coming out of you okay from that center and you know uh, and you you said something important is about um the picture might have influenced you and the reason i'm bringing that into play is each of the images for each of the koans has been really have been really carefully selected because they actually say a lot about the intrinsic meanings behind the koans, mm-hmm. okay? So in um, uh, the school of Rinzai, in, in, as, which is where the Zen teachings come from um, in Japanese Buddhism <clears throat> uh, or Zen Buddhism, uh, they call that essential food. Essential food meaning there's guidance 
a guidance towards you understanding the meaning behind that teaching, behind that koan. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time, there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer, but there is an intrinsic experience that when you really understand Zen, when you really in tune with spirit, um, you will, you will feel that and you will Mm -hmm. understand it and that level of understanding through direct experience of that koan on a energetic level is what we're trying to help you connect with in this book so these images are helping uh, you guide you along that so you was guided along by the image right and it helped you feel something within yourself so you know, you you really did connect at that level. So, so Dao Ying is really Dao is new, normally referred to as um, as as a way. Okay, it's not just a way though. It's also a lot more than that. It's about um, it's about the greater whole. Okay, and I want to go into the nitty gritty of that when I actually read it, so um, you get the actual detail on it. And Yin actually refers to energy. Okay, uh, you might have heard of Yin and Yang as um, equal and opposite energies. Okay, All right. So you know you might refer to uh, it as Qi, or I might to refer to it as Prana. Okay, in 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 uh, in Sanskrit and uh, ancient Indian teachings, for instance. Okay, uh, so there's lots of words for the same thing, but this is what we would uh, term your essential life force. This energy that <clears throat> is um, floating and permeating all time space. Okay, it's outside of us and it's inside of us. Okay, um, a bit like a bit like air. Or a bit like oxygen in the air, right? Oxygen's outside of us, but it's also inside of us and it's in every single cell, okay? And as a consequence, it gives us life, okay? And it's flowing within us, right? You can also refer to the chi energy as being this these currents of energy that are flowing within our body. But when you get blocked in these um, energy channels, then what happens, you, you know, you tend to get illness uh, and you start to become sick uh, as a consequence. So, you know, chi is not just a martial arts uh, idea for throwing chi balls and, you know, oh, you can, right? Uh, as you may, may you know, see on, you know, some of the um, uh, uh, more um, fictitious type of computer games or movies and that kind of thing. But actually there's more truth to it than you realize because there, there is energy inside and outside of us. And really it's about cultivating that. And um, so Tao Yin is a, is more than just uh, using the holistic uh, way of bringing that energy together. It's much more than that. So what I'm going to do, right, in this case, is actually I'm going to read this Quran first, and that will give us more food for thought, mm-hmm. and it'll give us more talking points as a consequence, because there's so much in this that if I try and, and talk about it loosely, we're going to miss something. So I'd mm-hmm. rather give you the, the, the actual Quran teachings itself, and then we'll all take it from there. So the reading reading of this uh, goes is Tao Yin or Dao Yin. Uh, and it says building and moving energy between the Dantians or chakras, uh, as it also is known, is, is Kung Fu. Uh, let me repeat that again. Building and moving energy between the Dantians, i.e. the chakras, is Kung Fu. Okay. In the, in the Dao, there are three key Dantians, which are number one, the low Dantian is two f- fingers below your navel, right? This, this would be your second chakra, okay? Because there's seven chakras, but three, three Dantian points, yeah? Um, number two is the middle 
Dantian, which is the solar plexus. That would be the, the third chakra, okay, right here. Okay, and then um, the third higher uh, Dantian is the third eye, okay? It's, it's right, you know, just above uh, your eyebrows in the middle. That's your sixth chakra, right? Moving Kung Fu is Yang, and still Kung Fu is Yin. Hence, Yin and Yang energy, also known as Qi or Qi, Energy are the two forces of heaven and earth. The main goal of Dao Yin is therefore to create balance between internal and external energies, revitalize the body, mind, and spirit, develop strength and flexibility in muscles and tendons, ultimately become one with the Dao. Okay. Dao Yin works by lifting Qi from the lower part of your body to the Dantians, and, we'll, and you will know it is working when you notice the meridians start to get warm. The practice of Dao Yin precedes Tai Chi Chuan and Qigong, and also includes breathing exercises, which help you to move your Qi energy so you can start to experience being one with the Dao. Now. Mm. In the past, we've talked about this ocean of consciousness, right? This ethereal energy that is <clears throat> that is everywhere. Okay, it's invisible; we can't see it, but if we really tune into it, we can feel it. That is what Tao is. It's the life force inside and outside of us. Okay, it's the life force inside and outside of us. Right. So Tao Yin is, as, it, as the Quran explains, the means by which we can move that energy, right? Fascinating. And, and the most fascinating fact here, well, let me ask you the question, out of what I said there, what is the most fascinating fact for you? For me, it's that thing about uh, the two sides still and moving that they're kind of together and that moving that energy, but keeping a, 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 an element of stillness to it is quite, it's quite interesting. It's like two polar opposites that you need both of them in order for things to function and move. Cause if it's still, it's just still, but it needs movement in order to move, but you need both of them in order to kind of realize both of them. Yeah. But let me read that one line again. Right. <clears throat> Cause that's actually the line that, always wows me no matter how many times I read this koan, even though I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving Kung Fu is Yang and still Kung Fu is Yin. Hmm. Right? It's all Kung Fu. Hmm. Kung Fu is energy. Yeah? Hmm. Real energy and moving energy. Hmm. That is the meaning of Kung Fu or Gung Fu, right? Yeah? So as a martial arts podcast or a martial arts inspired podcast, which is here to help us cultivate self-mastery and self-realization, we're actually bringing it back to the core, right? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the true proof and evidence and the roots behind what Kung Fu is all about. Mm -hmm. It's about Tao Yin. Now, forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. That's the best I... Uh, I, that's the best I know of how to pronounce it. So, you know, um, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, apologies to those people that can pronounce it better than me or correctly for that matter. But, um, you know, bringing it back, Kung Fu is energy, right? So its roots lie in spirit, right? And I use the word spirit because spirit, you could also use the alternative word energy, Okay. Spirit is energy. Energy is spirit. They're one. This is the same thing. Okay. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I'm going into like deep pondum ponder moment because yeah, there's just see. <laughs> so many, so many things in what you just shared. Because this, this, this is a, a deep one. Like, like if we want to go woo, woo, this is where we could go woo, woo. If anybody wants to go there, right? <laughs> even though there's sense in the woo, woo, because that's the thing that you need both. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, when you said like, movement and still, I'm, I'm, when I'm looking at the screen at the moment, I'm seeing your yin yang 
on your shirt, right? So that just keeps coming to my mind in that, that like the two, you got a circle, it's described a circle. It's got two kind of polar opposites in that. And then you've got, you know, so for example, you got yellow and black one, you got a bit of yellow inside the black and a bit of black inside the yellow. Yeah. And then you've got this motion in there as well, right? That is kind of symbol. When you look at the symbol, you could tell there's movement in there, but yet it's still, right? Um, so, and and that is, you know, to me, that I look at that and think, wow, that's that's just so deep, lags. <laughs> yeah. And absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, this is, this is you know, this is known as the Dahitu, right? Again, Apologies for pronouncing it incorrectly, but it's it's the symbol that represents the, the yin and yang, okay? The the energies, the the interdependent um, energies that interplay with one another. They're not they're not they don't repel one another. They're although they're of a different essence. Right. Mm. You could say like a battery, you know, is positive and negative. You know, you can say like uh, uh, darkness and light, uh, sound and silence, you know, that kind of thing. One can't exist without the other. Now, let's just think about this. Right. If there was no light, you'd never knew darkness would exist. Mm. Exactly. So there's a lot of things that we don't know because we haven't seen the opposite of it yet to help us understand what we've always had. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just say uh, if you, if you was deaf, you couldn't hear, right. You wouldn't appreciate what you wouldn't be able to appreciate what sound is. Mm. You can't hear it. Mm-hmm. Right. So how do you know what sound is? Mm. Right? It may, you know, uh, and the same goes for if you're blind uh, and you can't see anything at all. How would you know? How would you know what light would mean? You know, because it's just that's your that's your doesn't exist in your world for that. Isn't it? Yeah. There is no other. There's no no other state, right? Until your sight comes back, or you open your eyelids, for instance. Open your eyes, mm-hmm. and you know, wake up in the morning, for instance, and you be like, ah, oh, okay. Uh, but you don't even realize that actually mm-hmm. this this. And I, I don't want to, I don't like to use the word this duality, right? Because then people start to think, all right, there's one on or off, there's a binary state. Actually, it's not, it's a monality because they're part of the whole, right? Mm. They're part of the same. And it's like, the, it's like uh, we have a day, but it's made out of morning and night. And we have temperature and it's made out of hot and cold, you know? Um, so it's like, it's just the degree to which is different, isn't it? That's right. Uh, the easy way to easiest way to understand it is two sides of the same coin. Mm. Yeah, exactly. the coin is always going to be the same, right? But it's got two sides. All right, you got some smart ass to say, "Oh, well, actually, it's the third side." All right, so you got <laughs> right. Yeah. If you wanted to put it that way, right? You got body, mind, and then you got spirit. Okay, that's right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Everything really boils down to a three in the end, yeah, <laughs> uh, which, which is interesting. And that three boils down to a one. Mm. Okay. Um, and then eventually, eventually, when you transcend that, it boils down to zero, right? Mm. So, <laughs> right. So, so, so understand so it. All right. It. They're all right, man. Yeah, exactly. So coming back to this, you know, you're talking about this energy, right? We've got this, we've got this energy, uh, we've got this life force, this chi, qigong, this prana, you know, the Initially, it, we t- you know, I refer to here to the Dantians. The Dantians are the key meridian points within your within your body. And the funny, my when I wrote this, you know, the the most fascinating fact for me was that in Chinese martial arts, um, that these Dantians right had a direct overlap onto uh, yogic chakras. Mm. Well, they're not going to be any different, are they? Really, let's mm. face it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you know, the the human body, you know, it's and, the same uh, everywhere. Exactly. All right, it's the same everywhere, right? Unless yep. you know, unless you're unfortunate to you know be born with a disfigurement or something, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you know your energetic body is not working the same, mm. right? 
it might actually mean you're more in tune with the energetic body mm. because if you know like if somebody's deaf for instance or somebody's blind all of their other senses right uh, become heightened, yeah. heightened right they become hyperactive right so so all of a sudden um it doesn't you know, being blind or being deaf is not uh, as bigger uh, weakness as you think so because your other senses actually become much stronger all right mm-hmm. um now and again this is just you know talking from a reference you know uh and through uh, my uh, the textbook understanding on things <clears throat> you'd have to speak to someone that's really uh, blind or deaf to really understand that yeah. but the again the energetic body the energy is everywhere it's it permeates everyone and everything so it's in in us all so these dantians and these chakras what is the route in which the energy travels right mm-hmm. like energy can, tra- can travel top to bottom or bottom to top but ultimately when we source energy we we source the energy from the bottom to the top okay why because the dantian right in chinese martial arts is the source of the energy okay Right, that's the energy energetic center, right? And that from that energetic center, you build and develop that energy and allow it to travel up here mm-hmm. and then expand it outwardsly and then open your receptivity to the cosmos. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, right? what, uh, what visually comes to mind is um, when you see those pictures of like the globe, for example, right? You see a picture of the earth and they show the magnetic waves of the earth, which from yeah. the north pole almost like come out. And they go around the earth and they go back in again at the bottom. So you got this kind of oval thing going on, right? And it's the same with the human being. When you have a human being, they show the same dark kind of diagram. They show the human being standing there, then these magnetic waves going out of the top of the head, going all the way around the body and back from the base root chakra into the system again. And it's that visualization which can show you the flow of this energy that you're talking about. That's right? Right. So that positive negative thing we were talking about in a battery exists within humans as well as the planet earth as well as way beyond into the the universe so um that's a a good visualization to get into one's mind so i'm glad you said that because that that magnetic field is called the taurus okay Mm. um and uh that's t-o-r-u-s okay and when you're energizing your dantians, the the idea is not to just energize it from those three points. Okay, in fact, you're creating this Taurus energy around you. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's it's rising up through your pelvic floor, all the way up through your spine, all the way up uh, through your crown, and all the way out and back in. Okay, and it's going and it's doing this, and it's just boom, 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 boom. All right, mm-hmm. now. Now, for those who are listening, Lax is doing this kind of circular motion. So just imagine you bring your hands to your front of your face and then extending up and then widening your arms to the side and then back again. So he's making a circular motion just to, just for those who are listening. Yeah, no, absolutely. So what I'm, what I'm trying to simulate is this energy um, coming in to your uh, base of your spine, traveling up your spine, up, out, to the top of your spine, through the third eye, up through the crown, right? Up out into the ether, okay? And then it's spreading around outside of you. So this is where I'm putting a wave, uh, you know, uh, drop, um, raising and dropping my arms to the sides all the way down and back through uh, the base of our pelvic floor again and around. And it is continuous, okay? Mm. So this energy mm. can go um, uh, from bottom up or it can go up from top down right <clears throat> um but in general in general when you doing energetic practice uh you raise the energy from the bottom to the top okay and allow it to travel in that motion okay now the reason for that is like i said the dantian is the is the center of your energy is where the energy enters your body okay <clears throat> and uh the crown chakra is where energy leaves your body all right. So, um, so that's the kind of the, the movement, the energetic movement that we're trying to create here. But there's also uh, energetic pathways within our body, which, um, um, which kind of get a bit more detailed than, uh, which, um, 
I don't really want to go into right now is I do explain it in one of my meditations, okay, um, um, on how to channel that energy. But there is a there are ways in which you can which you can move energy within your body. But the the see the idea here is is um, the energy has to flow, okay, has to continuously flow because when the energy stops right? It starts to become stagnant hmm. and it starts to affect the, the space in where the energy is stopped. Okay. Now, one of the things that, um, uh, that I don't really talk about that often is I'm actually a chi healer. Okay. And I do, um, abdominal detox, chi, uh, massage healing. Okay. And uh, the idea is that each of your organs store certain emotions, but if you're experiencing some emotional trauma, your certain organs will store the emotion that you're experiencing, right? And you'll start to get problems there, okay? So if someone's got, you know, a perpetual, you know, uh, abdominal uh, stomach problem or someone's got a perpetual, um, um, you know, uh, reflux or uh, lower back pain right but the doctor says hey there's nothing wrong with you why don't you just take some painkillers right mm -hmm. actually what there is something wrong but it's something wrong on a on a on a energetic level on a spiritual level and this is why back in back in time when you had medicine uh men and women in villages uh, that would um, help heal the people, they would start by healing the spirit first, okay? Because when you heal the spirit, the body will resolve itself. But if you just heal the symptoms of the things that you're experiencing, your spirit's still going to be sick and the energy is still not going to flow. So the idea is to get that energy moving again, right, in a nutshell. And when you get that energy moving again and you get it flowing again, the the organs can let go of all that trauma that was trapped there and it opens up the energy pathways again so the energy starts to flow again that makes sense mm. right so ultimately Tao yin is about creating you know it says the main goal of Tao yin is therefore to create balance between internal and external energies right so this is when you you know we spoke about the Taurus okay and allowing that external uh, chi energy to flow in to you, through you, and outside of you. So you are harmony with Tao, okay? You are one with Tao. You can't be one with Tao if you don't connect with Tao. And to connect with Tao, you got to do some sitting work. And it keeps coming back to that, right? You can do a lot of physical work as much as you like, but eventually you're going to have to do a lot of internal work, okay? Um, That's where that thing comes in, where you talk about stillness and movement. Because yes. with this kind of context, where the martial arts is movement and then the meditation is stillness. So they tie in quite nicely. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you can't have movement without stillness, mm -hmm. right? So we were talking about yin and yang and the dualistic nature of energies, which are monistic, but you can't have movement without stillness, hmm. you know, because if you're always constantly moving, you will never have a comprehension of what stillness means. If you're yeah. always still, you never have any comprehension, a comprehension of what movement means hmm. is by having both. You actually appreciate both. And actually by being still, is not really is you being still but the energy is always moving you need the energy has to continuously flow if you want to kill if you want to decay deteriorate and and give death to something then stop the energy flowing there hmm. right if that happens in your body right that part of your body is going to get ill hmm. right and it might start having knock-on effects to other parts of your your body on a physical level okay does that make sense Mm -hmm. So, and talking, the, talking about, I just wanted to share this fantastic book if you want to find out more about like the body and emotion connection. Yeah, it's a, it's a book called Love Yourself. Um, so your body's telling you, Love Yourself, the most complete book on metaphysical causes of illness and disease. It's by Lise Burbrio. I can't say her surname, but that's L I S E. Apologies, my friend. And um, so that's L I S E. Uh, and then the surname is B O U. 
R B E A U. Um, fantastic book because, like what Lax was talking about, for example, you know, if you constantly remain anger, you're going to hold anger, the emotion and stuff in your back. You can hold it in your liver. You can hold it in your gallbladder, right? Um, and there's so many other kind of things, right? Like if you're not flexible in life, you can have knee problems. There's like so much correspondence and relationship between the emotion and the pains in your body. Um, so it's definitely worth looking into that because it's, a, it's, it's like over 500 different types of emotions and whatnot, which um, is a brilliant reference book. I always refer to it. If anything's going on, it gives you an insight into subconscious things around you. Yeah, and it's one of the books on my bookshelf as well. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> definite recommended read. Um, and um, it will definitely, you know, kind of help you tap into – issues and problems that you experience in your body on an energetic level. Okay. And how you can start to resolve that. You know, if you've got access to uh, a chi healer like myself, then by all means, right. You know, use that if that's, that's the way you want to go. If you've got access to reading materials like uh, Lise Bobo's book, then go that way. Okay. Because it's amazing how much is out there that, you know, if you're, haven't opened your mind to it or you've never been aware of it or you never crossed paths with this information um, that you can learn actually there's there are so many modalities to heal so many modalities right um, and uh, uh, ultimately ultimately heal the spirit the mind your emotions and your body will heal, which takes us to the second point, which is uh, with the main goal of Tao Yin is to revitalize the body, the mind and the spirit. Okay. Mm -hmm. That kind of really talks to that point is revitalization. When your life force, your chi energy, your prana energy is moving, you know, uh, healthily around inside and outside your body. So you're constantly refreshing that energy, you know, um, she Tao Tao doesn't get stale. It's the stillness of the energy that makes your body stale and decay and deteriorate. Okay. The, the energy is energy. You can, you can harness it and hold it and kind of, like I said, it starts to, starts to become toxic or you can move it and it starts to become vitalizing. It's an interesting idea, but actually this idea manifests in health and vitality or or sickness and disease is a choice, okay? And this is why it's important to exercise. People think exercising is about, you know, physical fitness. That's what we're taught. I'm a personal trainer. I'm a CrossFit coach, all right? I'm a martial arts instructor. The physical part of it is important, okay? <clears throat> but there's much more to it than cultivating vitality uh, um, physically, okay? It's not just about cardiovascular fitness, muscular strength, muscular endurance, flexibility, and um, motor skills, okay? They, these are your five physical categories of fitness. Yeah, you do need them, but it's much more than that. Tao Yin is about revitalizing. It revitalizes every cell in your body and the consciousness of every cell in the body, okay? When your life force, your chi is flowing freely, each cell will work optimally, okay? Each cell will shine bright in its own light. And there's also been scientific studies on measuring consciousness by is uh, photon light uh, measurements, okay? Mm -hmm. And they found that consciousness has a light, okay? Mm. Right? right? So it's also been measured to some degree, right? Remember, you know, we, we talked about this, you know, science is there to prove spirit exists, right? Mm -hmm. In all of its different ways of expressions, right? Shapes, sizes, ways and forms. So, so make sure your energy is moving, your chi is moving. It will revitalize you. You'll feel better. Your skin will be get better. I tell you what, if you ever meet a chi master, okay? All right? If you ever meet mm -hmm. a chi master, look young, mm -hmm. right? And look young. Why? 
<laughs> Why? Because the cells are vitalized. Yeah. Right? The cells are vitalized, right? So I, again, encourage you to do a bit of research, right? If you really, you know, meet someone that understands energy, right? You'll, you'll see that um, they look a lot younger than, than they actually are by their physical age, okay? Hmm. There's also, I just wanted to share another resource. Um, there's a company called HeartMath, which have been doing years and so much focus, uh, focused work on um, almost like the, what's the word? The energetic reach of your heartbeat almost, right? Or um Sorry, your aura, yeah. So aura, they've been yeah. like looking at how to measure this stuff. They've got, you know, they're doing all sorts of stuff. They've done meditation research. They've got equipment that, you know, you can plug on to your finger to measure your heartbeat and whatnot. And so there's a proper institute which is looking into this. And they've done a lot of space, work around that. So that's heartmath.com. So you can definitely check them out as well. Now, here's, here's a, the, the funny thing is I actually did think about HeartMath Lab <clears throat> when you mentioned um, the Taurus earlier on. Hmm. Uh, HeartMath Lab is the actual institute. Um, and what they did was they created a machine to measure the energetic field that your heart is emitting, hmm. hence HeartMath Lab. And uh, what they discovered was your heart can emit an energetic field right, which is the torus, which is the, the energy flow that we described earlier, where it kind of comes up in through your, uh, your pelvic floor, rises up through your spine, comes out, out of your uh, crown, uh, and then spreads up and out, and then comes all the way down your sides, right, from right underneath your feet and comes back up into your pelvic floor, right, and it keeps circulating. That torus, they measured, actually measured the energy, and they measured it up to eight feet. Hmm. Now, here's the thing. They only measured it up to eight feet because that was how big they could make the machine to measure hmm. the energetic field. The energetic field or your aura, as it's also referred to, is much bigger than eight feet. It's just happened hmm. to be their, their machine was only eight feet wide. Okay. It's, it's interesting because that just reminds me of this gentleman who is a scholar, Gyanyi uh, Maskin Singhji, and he was doing a speech once um, about this idea. And he was in, in like the Punjabi language or in Sanskrit, we refer to a spiritual master as a Mahapurk. Yeah, Purk means human, a Maha means great. So it's like this great human being, powerful human being kind of thing, right? Which is so I tap it, who's tapped into that connection. And they were talking about this, their, their field as well and he actually said that could go on for miles depending on who that spiritual teacher is right so it's fascinating that we've got equipment now which is being able to measure that and like you said the, the range of the machine was only limited right so we don't know how far that can actually go out and i'm sure people have had those encounters with a lot of people when you just go into a room or you connect with someone and you think there was just something about that person you're not too sure what you know, where there was a feeling of like, you know, connectedness or where there was a feeling of push-pull type of thing going on. We've all experienced that in some form or another with other people. So it just yes. begs the question as to like what's actually going on there, right? So maybe that's what it is. You're tuning into that field where you're actually feeling that energetic push and pull as well. So it's interesting stuff that I definitely need look into further. So let me ask you a question, right? Have you ever thought about somebody and they've called you like almost straight away mm. or uh, or the next day or the next couple absolutely. of days. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And and you haven't spoke to them for months, if not years. That's right. And you're like, wow, right. I was thinking about you like, you know, a second ago or a minute ago, or even like a day or two ago, and you've called. Wow. That's right. Right. Now, there's some superstition in Indian culture, okay? And uh, you might be familiar with this. And I will, the reason I want to share this because it's, it's important here, right? So what do you think is a meaning, right, in um, Punjabi uh, culture, right, in that's North Indian culture, when somebody sneezes? Oh, yes. So, <laughs> so they say somebody's remembering you. <laughs> that's exactly, what they say right? when you sneeze, they say somebody's remembering you. <laughs> exactly. When you sneeze, right, is uh, is uh, 
it's an understanding. It's not even a superstition. It's an understanding. They say, Koi yaad karta, right? That means somebody's remembering you, right? <laughs> now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you think of somebody and they call you, you know what you're doing? You're actually utilizing the Tao. Hmm. You're pointing a message out into the ocean of consciousness, into Tao, right? And they're picking it up. And they might be hundreds of miles away, thousands of miles away, right? And they'll call you or they'll get in contact or they'll drop you a message or whatever it might be. And you'll be like, fuck me. How the, how the hell did that happen? Isn't it funny and interesting though that they say there's also in cultures and, and, and I'm, I'm sure we've all experienced some ways like when they say, you know, when you, you want something from your heart, like it's come from your heart, yeah. it's all of a sudden, it's like, it, it, it seems to just materialize or happen or whatnot. It's the same. So if you've remembered someone genuinely from your heart, yeah, maybe it's the heart pulling on the heart signals, right? So it's a very interesting space <laughs> no, absolutely and this is why maybe the the word heartstrings come from right because mm. in in um uh, hawaiian hawaiian um um culture there's this idea uh within this huna practice mm. right which is their spiritual practice there's this idea of arca right and arca is um imagine Right. There's a there's a an energetic connection between me and you. Right. But this energetic connection is a string of light connected from my heart to your heart. Hmm. Yeah. Directly connected. Right. <clears throat> and the stronger the connection, the, the the brighter and thicker this string is. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, when anybody and everybody we've ever crossed paths with, we create Arca. OK. And um, therefore. If I think about something, you think about it. You know, you talk about, you know, quantum universes and things like that. Um, it's already been proven that actually things are connected and they do exist, right? Um, in parallel lives, let alone parallel universes, right? So when you affect one thing in one place, it will affect another thing in another place. In fact, this technology is so advanced that actually they've developed quantum computers. Hmm. Yeah. They've actually developed quantum computers that can affect change in one space, but also in other spaces all at the same time. All right. And that's how nutty, right? Mm -hmm. This is that actually the science to prove the spirit actually has been implemented in the computing that is yet to come, that is not yet commercially available, but mm. it's on its way. And what will happen? <clears throat> this is what will happen. Computers will work at the speed of light. Mm. Now, I'm not saying speed of light is just one speed. I'm far from it, all right? I'll tell you that from my own spiritual experience. But either way, it will work at a speed of light and that's how fast computers will be all right so they're not there at the moment they're far from it but they will be right and that's yeah. where com quantum computing is taking us so when we talk about quantum fields and quantum connections arca is a quantum connection for instance right if you want to call it that um we are all connected in that way right and this when we have these experiences, just remember, you've just tapped into the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's another word for Tao, okay? For those of you guys are wondering, what the fuck are you guys on about, right? You've lost me. The Tao <laughs> is the matrix. Okay? <laughs> it's not the illusion. It's the actual matrix itself. Does that make sense? Mm, like a field of connectedness. A field of connectedness, exactly. Could and this be is why matter. We don't know if it's, that's the proper name for it. Could be grey matter. This know? is why when you see the Matrix, right, or any of the movies in the Matrix franchise, the Matrix appears as a as this kind of uh, black field with these green characters falling in space and connecting and doing all these. Weird, mm. things, yeah. <clears throat> um, 
that's uh, my technical explanation for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Weird jumbly things, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that that's Dao. What they what they're trying to uh, show you in some f- fictional uh, representation uh, using technology is that there's this field that connects people to a higher state of being. This is why this is why um, um, Keanu Reeves and his character is actually tapped into it. Because he's tapped into it, he's tapping into the power of the matrix. Mm. Now, I know we talk about meditation uh, quite a lot and connecting with your higher self, but actually what we're really saying is that be Keanu Reeves in the matrix because that's what will happen once you plug in, right? That's what's exactly going to happen. You will tap into everything, that infinite intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. So Dao Yin is that, is exactly that. So now we're going to bring it back and you're going to think, oh, fuck, man. All right, now you're messing with my head, right? And you're talking about Matrix, you're talking about Ocean of Consciousness, you're talking about Dao Yin. And now we're going to, how, what's that got to do with martial arts? <laughs> Remember the Dao, the Matrix inside you, right? That Matrix is moving in and around you. If you tap into the matrix and then you become part of the matrix and that, and you can utilize that matrix, you can utilize that matrix. Mm. Okay. Because if you're, if you're not aware of it, you're not using it. Right. It's just there doing nothing. Right. It's like having a treasure map sitting in your drawer doing fuck all, or you could take that treasure map and go follow it and, and, and get the treasure. Right. You got to do Absolutely. Bit. Like, I mean, when you were sharing that, I was just remembering um, when I first came across uh, learning JKD from you, for example, right? And how it was the first martial art I came into contact with, which was talking about offensive, attacking first before getting attacked, for example. Yeah. But one of the things which I found fascinating was this whole energy work that you actually do in Jeet Kune Do, right? For example, um, it's like feeling, you're waiting for the feeling, like how the person's going to attack if they're attacking softly, you know, you attack hard and that, the way you were explaining and that kind of dynamic between two people and the opponent was exactly that. I felt it was this energetic exchange um, of energies. Right. So it was like Bruce was very in line with that in tune to be able to see that in the moment while he's in that fight state. Um, yeah. And, you know, that that's where it plays into the whole Kung Fu side of things as well, because there is that energetic exchange, but it's also bringing your body into your kind of, it's like your body's a sensor and heightening the senses in your body to be able to feel those subtle movements like the matrix before it's even actually happening. Right? <laughs> because some people hear that, right? Some martial artists, when they're in the, in, the, in, the, in the moment, they say it was like they could kind of see it happening before it even happened. And it's like, what frame of mind does somebody have to be in in order to see that situation playing out? <laughs> exactly. Do you know, a really good friend of mine uh, who's a, um, who's a uh, Wing Chun master actually uh, actually shared with me this, uh, this secret. And he said, he goes, there's, there's different ways, there's different ways to fight. There's three different ways to fight against. If there's just two opponents, you got physical to physical, Hmm. right? You got uh, energetic to physical and you got energetic to energetic, Hmm. or you can say, physical to physical, spirit to physical, spirit to spirit, okay? Or you can say physical to physical, chi to physical, chi to chi. Mm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, I felt it. And I tell you what, it's a whole new Mm ballgame. It's a whole new ballgame, right? And to tap into that in combat just takes you from there to... Okay, uh, so it's a it's a whole it's a whole new ball game. I can't. You you feel that around, um, like you were saying, you know, um, a master martial artist who have been doing it for years. Even just come into their presence, you can feel that. You can feel an energetic shift. It's really strange. Yeah. You know, I mean, I you know, it's one of the reasons we connected as well. But when we got together, it was that ex- energy exchange. when we first met each other, like, oh my goodness, this is like. It's almost like a ball of light hitting you to some degree, you know? 
And even when, when I used to do um, jiu-jitsu and, uh, you know, and I was learning from um, Professor Brian Dossett, the first time I met him, it was the same. It was this, just had this energy about him. And I was like, what's this? What is this I'm feeling, right? And that's the bits that got me really intrigued about it. And we were talking about how that's kind of missing in martial arts. But it's one of the reasons we got into martial arts, isn't it? <laughs> right? and, and, and here's the thing, right, <clears throat> is that if, you, if you're missing something at martial arts, then you're probably not ready for it anyway. And you probably won't realize you're missing it until you're ready for it and then you'll miss it and then you'll find it. <laughs> or, it, yeah. it or should I say, it will find you. Yeah. Yeah. And mm. that's what happens. It, you know, I'm a firm believer and uh, uh, and have you know through my own insights uh, and spiritual insights is absolute faith that you will get exactly what you need when you need it hmm. all right uh, so yeah so on you know keep keep going um and you know if you're learning any kind of martial arts, it's not necessarily just Kung Fu, right? Or any specific type of Kung Fu style. <clears throat> martial arts is martial arts. Two arms, two legs, movement any which way you want, right? And combative expression and expressions of love, however you want to express yourself, right? In the end, martial arts is a way of either destruction and hurt or mm. creation and healing, okay? Yep. You can't have one without the other because, again, you won't know what healing is if you were never been hurt. You won't mm. know what construction is if you've never been destructed or you won't know what um, what the other, the polar opposite is. So they're part of one, right? So the one of my one of my friends um, uh, who's a um, Hakuro Jiu-Jitsu uh, instructor and teacher, he taught me, you know, um, if you know how to break something, you should know how to make it, which kind of changes the whole game because actually you start to realize that actually it was never about breaking anything in the first yeah. place. <clears throat> and actually, if you're about making stuff, then actually what's higher than making, making your energetic field as strong as possible so you mm. tap into the matrix, you tap into the Tao, with, and that really is true power. Because all of a sudden, when you carry this aura, and I say this to my students, when you carry an aura, right, uh, that is filled with this free-flowing chi energy, you're not going to get into a fight. Mm. You've got to be a complete arsehole, an idiot to get into a fight, right, if you have that power within you. Right? You must be looking for it. Maybe you had a bit of a downer moment and 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 that happens but it won't happen because the energetic floor will push it all out mm. because it's not for you anymore you're mm -hmm. riding on a different wave of consciousness and that different wave of consciousness is going to bring you a whole bunch of different type of experiences of people in your life and they are going to complement and accessorize and supplement and support you on that journey mm. right that you're on right now so my it's exactly only... what Bruce Lee said, right? The art of fighting without fighting. Absolutely. And that was the inspiration for the title of this book, The Art of yep. Thinking Without Thinking, because all of this is doesn't involve any thinking. It involves energetic free flow. The moment you think, you start to become mechanical and you stop to stop energy. Hmm. Think about that. The moment you start to think... No, don't think about that. <laughs> no. We're going to say, let go, let it go in. <laughs> We're going to say, let go of that and allow yourself to flow, flow like water. Mm. Right? So, you know, Bruce was, Bruce was famously said, you know, be like water, you know, <clears throat> and the idea is to really allow this chi energy to flow like water. And as it's flowing like water, you actually start to become part of that ocean. Mm. Right. And then the question is, and this is the one of the other comments in this, you know, are you the drop in the ocean? Are you, or are you the ocean in the drop? <laughs> right. <clears throat> exactly. Man. Right. So that's Dao Yin for you guys. Um, um, or people, should I say, and uh, <clears throat> you know, um, go out there, 
you know, try, try little mini experiments, you know, try, try to tap into the matrix, try to tap into the Tao, the ocean of consciousness by thinking of someone, think of someone. Now you said something really important earlier on <clears throat> about, you know, is how you feel. It's really important that you think with a clean body, mind, spirit, have pure intention because if you think with ill will, yeah, as in bad intention, that will also manifest. Now you start to create karma. Yeah. Mm. And on our last podcast, we talked about Dharma and you being walking your own path in aloneness, right? In your true power. Right. So be mindful of that. You don't want to create that. So whenever you're 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 putting out intention, make sure your heart your mind and your spirit and your body is clean. Okay. Mm. Right. It's thinking for, uh, it's, it's projecting positive intent or high positive intent. Right. When you do that. So when you think of someone with that and see what happens, just think mm. of someone, think of someone that you haven't spoken to in a while and you miss them and send them love. Mm. Just think about, and I, when I mean, th this is the, the, point where you actually are consciously projecting okay right but you you have to have that intention so when i say think have the intent okay think of the intention and hold the intention then and then stop thinking and let it happen all right mm -hmm. so that's where you stop thinking right just let the intention out yeah like like uh having a helium balloon right and you got a message on there right and then you just let it go and it just floats away. Just let it go. Let it, let it land where it lands, you know? And then see what happens. Do little mini experiments like this. And you'll be amazed at what kind of magic you can create in your life. Wow. Right. And then go on to bigger, bigger things, you know, whatever you want, you know, uh, like I said, do it with positive intention, right? Do it with positive intention. Every intention you send out there will come back to you. Also remember that, and I need to I need to need to add this in before before I finish this, because if you send out ill will and ill intent, it's gonna come back to you tenfold. Can you fucking handle that shit, right? Hmm. And and are you you know be careful you know what you wish for as I say, right? Because it'll happen. So don't do it. Also don't do it with the intention of receiving it back, right? So if you're doing something with high positive intent again don't do it with intention of receiving it back because if you expect it, it ain't gonna happen but when you don't expect it so no strings attached right no karmic credit or karmic debt as we spoke about in the last podcast just doing it with with a pure heart mind and spirit then see what happens and you'll be amazed you'll be amazed the kind of miracles you can create on a daily basis all right mm -hmm. so uh, there you Absolutely, go man. wow that's that's been amazing i mean what's so fascinating about the kind of topic we've been speaking about today is that you know what it doesn't matter what martial art you do right there's no style conversation going on here because this mindset that mindset stuff is the same across the board right in any field all right and that's what is very powerful about this so on that note Sifu Laklo, if there's anything else, we'll be signing off now and then we're joining everyone on the next conversation. I'd just like to say one little thing, okay? And that is, you know, we talk about martial mindset, but most people start with a martial physical set and then we go to martial mindset. Then you go to martial emotional set. Then you go martial spiritual set, okay? Collectively, it's martial mind power. That's the whole point hmm. yeah, of what we're doing is bringing it all together, right? There's no emissions here. It is only holistic inclusion as hmm. one, okay? And, you know, ultimately that is the Tao, okay, that we're talking about and we're leading you towards. So I hope you can, you can kind of visualize that, right? And then one day you can start to tap into that right and really step into your true power right and really start to um start, start to 
create some positive magic in the world because we need it, right? Mm -hmm. Let's face it, we need it. So, you know, if we all can start spread the message of, you know, creating creating a wonderment within the world, then, you know, we can make the world a better place. And just yeah. because there's, you know, people that got other agendas and so on, shouldn't stop you, should give you more reason to do goodness in the world, right? So just do it, right? So, um, you know, the tools are here, the podcasts here, the information's here, the learnings are here, you know, um, help yourself to help the world, really. And uh, let's, let's do our bit. You know, we can only do our bit, not expect everything else to change for us, you know. Hmm. Wow. As, as Bruce Lee said, you know, as he paraphrased it, um, as Confucius said, right? Under the heavens, we are but one family, <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. We just happen to be different. We just happen to be different. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, folks, and on that note, I hope you've enjoyed that. And as always, if you want to find out more, go to marshallmindpower.com, go to Amazon. You can check out the book, The Art of Thinking Without Thinking, go Master Your Life and Original Truth. And then also, you know, feel free to check out the Digital Dojo. So on that note, everyone, we wish you well, and we'll join you on the next one. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.